Hello, here I am in Brussels, Belgium, and I'm here to take you on an adventure to the Sourdough Library. So, here we go. During my trip through Europe this summer with my family, we not only went sightseeing and visited family, we were also able to taste amazing breads and pastries everywhere we went. Like this flatbread made out of rye and whole grains that we tried in the south of Germany called Rahmflake or many other delicious German breads. I also got to taste and see how a bakery in the south of Germany keeps and uses their sourdough starter to create amazing delicious breads. Moreover, I tasted the famous Liege waffle, which is a delicious treat and a highly recommended sweet bread to eat if you are in Belgium. Today, we're driving to the south of Belgium to a small town called Sambith to visit the Sourdough Library. I am really excited because for years, I have been wanting to come visit the Sourdough Library and meet this man, Carl De Smith the curator of the Sourdough Library. The Sourdough Librarian watches over the well-being of more than a hundred sourdoughs from all over the world, and he was very kind to give my wife and I a tour of the Purados Center for Bread Flavor. For years, Purados has been conducting in-depth research into how people around the world experience the taste of finished goods, particularly bread. And they have opened up this place where they tell the past and present of bread and try to imagine with their customers what the future of bread might look like. This is a very interesting place where we learned a lot about the history of bread, the many different kinds of equipment used in the past for bread making and many other facts surrounding sourdough baking. We even visited the bakery, which is the beating heart of the Center for Bread Flavor. It's in here where the future of bread is being shaped and kneaded. And now, finally, we're at the door of the Sourdough Library. I will open the door. Three, two, one. Whoa. Ah. <laughs> And that's not even the best part. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Here it is. The one and only. There's only one of these in the world. There is nowhere else a sourdough library. Maybe some people have a couple of starters that, that they keep. But here we have the latest arrival was last week. Well, two weeks ago. I got this one, eh? number 134 coming from Bulgaria. Yeah, Bulgaria. Well, if you are from the US, then 133 and 132 are coming from Panera Bread. Oh, okay. You know Panera, Panera yeah. Bread? Panera. So Panera Bread gave us their two starters. They have a stiff starter and a liquid uh, see the Panera to bread. study them. So what does uh, sourdough starter need to become part of the library? There is a couple of things that we need to know about the starter. So we, we have the website. I don't know if you, yeah. know, you know the website. Yeah, I have already even... Uh, you have registered? Re register mine, like, yeah, back, back, some... some and so we have the website. So the first thing people need to do is to... The magic of the... Very nice. How much do we have? 2,429 sourdoughs are registered. So uh -huh. that is my database of possible candidates. Yeah. And then we look into where do they come from? Which city? Which country? Uh, what kind of flour is used? Uh, is there a story? How old are they? These are all parameters we take into account. Now to give you an example, number one up to 37 are all starters from um, from uh, Italy, uh -huh. but they're all wheat and durum wheat starters. So if tomorrow someone from Italy says, I have a wheat starter that I would like to have in the library, 
the chances are small that we will accept it. But if it would be a rice starter, then it would become more interesting because from Italy we do not have rice starters for the moment. So these criteria are uh, evaluated based on very, very rational criteria. Okay, if tomorrow someone from Panama says I have a wheat starter, he has more chance to enter than someone from mm -hmm. the US. We have already 18 starters from the US, mm -hmm. well, no, 20 now. Yeah. Uh, so, like, as such, we evaluate. But the first, the most important is that a starter is at least five years old. Okay. Uh, there's many, of, many people have, to, have started a sourdough one year ago, two, two years ago. These are a bit too young for us to yeah. say we accept them. We yeah. want continuity. We want to have someone who said, I had my sourdough five years, and, and we hope that that person still has it within 10 years. Yeah. Because we want to uh, check the evolution. And we, last year with COVID, we wanted to do an experiment, uh, before, not knowing uh, that COVID was going to happen, but we had planned an experiment that we would bring in 10 bakers again, who gave us their sourdough in the past, in 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, to bring their sourdough, their current sourdough, back to us, so that we could compare it with what we have now in the library, to see how did their sourdough eventually evolved in their bakery, here in the library, how did the sourdough evolve in a different space, and uh, how is the sourdough, how are these compared to the, the sample or the analysis we got Oh, so many years ago. It's still something, on, it's still on the agenda to do that because it will be a very interesting thing to see. But that's the nice thing about the library is to have one location where scientists can study what is happening in Sourdough and there's no other place where you have such a vast collection. For the moment we have like 10 Sourdoughs that are part of scientific study on the digestibility of bread because it's, it's, it's so important. The Sourdough Library is a place like no other, and we really enjoyed our time in there, talking about the different stories of these sourdough starters and the science behind them. And here is an important message from the Sourdough Librarian. Well, hello, dear viewers of Need to Bake. I'm uh, excited that Daniel asked me to uh, make this little recording for you. As you see, and maybe you know or you don't know, but I am standing here in the Sourdough Library. The Sourdough Library is a unique non-for-profit initiative of our company. The company I work for is Puralos. We are a worldwide supplier of ingredients for bakery, patisserie and chocolate. And so this Sourdough Library is our contribution to the amazing world of fermentation and fermentation technology. And what we do here is three things. First of all, we preserve the biodiversity of sourdough, we protect the heritage, and we offer a backup to the people who have given us a sample. Now, what does the, the preservation of the biodiversity, what does that mean? It is that whenever a sourdough comes in, we send it to university, a partner in Italy with whom we work together. Marco Gobetti is one of the top microbiologists in the world of sourdough fermentation and there the sourdough strains the microorganisms that are in the sourdough are analyzed and isolated so that we can identify them and as such out of these 134 sourdoughs that we have here we have identified more than two than 1500 strains of lactic acid bacteria and yeast Protecting the heritage of sourdough is the second thing we do and by having these samples here we, we know what they are, where they come from, we know the story, we, 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 we gather all the information. Now we, we have two ways to do that. We have a website called thequestforsourdough.com that I hope Daniel will uh, edit in, in the video, it's here, thequestforsourdough.com where you can register online your sourdough. You register, we ask you a couple of questions about your sourdough, some pictures, so that we get a better view on it. And this is our database from where we select sourdoughs to become part of this uh, collection. 
Once you are selected to become part of the collection, we, we make you fill in a form with even more details, the way you feed your sourdough, how often you feed your sourdough, what you bake with it, and so on. So as such, we protect. On, on top of that, when the story is nice, I travel around the world to pick up the sourdough myself and make a movie about it. As such, we share the information of sourdough stories like the Mexican sourdough, Italian sourdough, sourdough from the Klondike, Japan, China and so on. A third reason we have the sourdough library is to offer a backup. A backup to the owners and uh, a backup means that whenever something would go wrong in the bakery where the sourdough is coming from, people can call us and we can send back their sourdough. Now since the opening in 2013 it only happened once. And that was a couple of months ago. I received a phone call from my friend in uh, Denmark, the owner of Sourdough. Well, it's actually standing here. It's Sourdough 76. Henrik, he calls me and says, Carl, you have no idea. My employee has used all the mother dough in the bread, so I'm out of it. He had a backup of sourdough stored in the freezer, but we are not in favor of storing sourdough in the freezer because you still might kill some of the consortium of microorganisms that is present. So uh, I came to the library, refreshed the sourdough, wrapped it in a jar and sent it back by DHL to, to his bakery. So that shows that the system works and that having a backup for a sourdough is sometimes needed because with a fire, with an error of an employee, with floodings, with whatever can happen, you might lose a mother dough. And if that mother dough is essential well, and most of the time they are essential or they are centuries or decades old, it's always nice to have a backup. So that is a little bit what we do here. We have for the moment 134 sourdoughs from uh, more or less 25 countries and it's counting. So if you have a sourdough that is not registered yet on the Quest for Sourdough website, I would ask you to, to do so. You can follow myself, uh, we have a Facebook page of the Quest for Sourdough. I have an, an Instagram account where I share a lot of tips and tricks on how to maintain your start, uh, a bit about the history, about everything I discover about sourdough, uh, I, I share. And you know what? It's all for free. So, nice to meet you. I hope you enjoyed this talk and thanks to Daniel for giving me the opportunity. Bye-bye. So here we have the one, the one from uh, Guadalajara. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, the sourdough from Guadalajara, birote. That was the birote. So what's so special about this is that it is refreshed. So every day they use it. They feed it with water and flour. Yeah. But once a week in summertime, they feed it with eggs, beer, and lime. The real reason I still do not understand, nobody could really explain it, but the beer is for the yeast, yeah. the eggs is for the proteins, they degrade and they give a special flavor, and the lime, because in Jalisco they put lime in everything. Uh -huh. That's, that's yeah, the explanation yeah. I got. <laughs> yeah? So, birote, very special sourdough. At the end of our visit, the sourdough librarian let me put the name of A Need to Bake on the wall of distinguished visitors. All in all, we had a great experience visiting the Sourdough Library and getting to know in person Carl De Smith, the Sourdough Librarian, who is a very kind and friendly person, very passionate about all things sourdough, the past, present, and future of bread. After visiting the Sourdough Library, believe me when I tell you that the future of bread is secure and it looks very bright. And the best part is that we all can contribute to create a better future for sourdough bread. Join the tradition, join the sourdough library, and let us create a better future for bread together. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please click on the like button. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I have a new video every week.